You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a special treat. Uh, the month of January going into the month of February is remembrance and celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, Black History Month. Is That's it still true. Black History Month Coming or am February, I saying it yes. wrong? No, okay. you're right. I just want to make sure. That's right. And I have Bishop Tony Branch with me. Good, Good to, to see you, him. Mark. Tony, you got... Ten hats, okay, <laughs> or at least three or four yes, or whatever. Sir. Busy man. You are involved on the executive board for the NAACP. Correct, correct. You're on the board at the Cape Verdean Association. I am. I know Martin Luther King wasn't Haitian, but you're involved with Haitian Community Partners. I'm their vice board. president. That's true. Okay, and you are on the Southeastern School Committee with me and the chair of the Diversity yes. Commission. So and that's at least five hats <laughs> that I can think of, okay? I'm a busy person. But you have been called upon yes. for some of these events to either be a speaker yep. or the MC. Correct. Okay, Correct. so yep. the first one I want to talk to you about, and we're going to go the full half an hour because there's plenty to talk about with, with all of these. Um, the NAACP annual breakfast, yes. Yes. which this year is on Saturday the 20th Correct. of January, Correct. and it's at Lombardo's, Lombardo's in Randolph. Correct. And I believe, I've, I've heard people kind of complain about that, however... Brockton is having a hard time right now with function facilities between Massasoit Community it, College right. and the Shaw Center. So right. it really isn't, it, it, there's, there's, there's no room at the end in some cases. Well, well, for the size of the MLK, first of all, I want to thank you and Happy New Year's. You, go, you all do great uh, work here at BCA. But for the size of the MLK breakfast, uh, it, is advanta it was advantageous for us not only to do it outside of the city because of the size, but be also because when we looked at the numbers, the budget numbers, it was actually cheaper to do it at Lombardo's. So for us, we, you know, NAACP is a very small chapter, very small branch. Uh, dollars matter. Uh, and what a lot of people do not realize is that we are a regional, uh, regional office gonna, of the NAACP. I was just going to say that it is the Brockton area, area. branch. Everybody area. hears Correct. Brockton and right. just thinks Brockton. And, Absolutely. And, you're, and I know you're also trying to work, or the, the NAACP New England group is trying exactly. to work on expanding the membership and expanding the base in Randolph. There's a, a big community that would participate. Um, you know, uh, the nice thing about the NAACP is if you go back to its founding and That's the right. founding in the area, there were people of all colors and all faiths that were involved and in it. There I, was a Jewish right. Judge Cohen right. in Brockton that helped. And I think challenge. that, and Mark, I'm so glad that you broached that because one of the confusion, the, 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 it has been confusing to some to believe that we're exclus exclusively a black organization, and that is absolutely not true. Uh, we're black, brown, and uh, we'll take, we take all comers. Uh, so a race and ethnicity does not matter. The NAACP is a civil rights organization, one of the longest in the world. And, uh, we fight for everyone. And if you think about it, the struggles that people have faced are different religions and different cultures Absolutely. and different backgrounds. Absolutely. I mean, there were a lot of people that were involved in the civil rights movement. That's right. That it didn't affect them, but it did affect them. Right. If you think about it, it affects everybody. It does affect okay. them, and it has to be a holistic approach to solving some of our uh, civil rights concerns in this country. Now, I know Phyllis Ellis is the new president. She both certainly is, um, doing a great she's, job. She's doing a great job. Yep. She's reinvigorated the chapter you, you have. Uh, you have a newsletter again. That's the right. The AXO program is going strong. Very strong. Now, membership is up. Membership is up. That's yep. even better. And you, I'm sure you'll be doing a membership pitch at the at, event we to get will more be. people to join. We will be. We okay. need people to join. Um, we need to be. And what I think people, where the disconnect is, we need dollars to support uh, civil rights, justice work, that is to say legal work. Uh, we, we also, you know, although we're at uh, the church, we need to also make sure that we support the church that we're at. Uh, so uh, we need dollars, we need members, but more importantly, we need members to come out to support us in some of the, the advocacy. We need people to come of different professions. If you have legal background, IT background, working in the school department, we need those sort of uh, vocations in order for the NAACP to grow. And again, it, we expect, and I, I'm going to use this word multiracial. I, I'm going to be talking a little bit about this uh, on, on Monday, but I, I hate to use the word racial because racial really doesn't, race doesn't exist. But with that said, we take all comers. So no matter what your racial background, your ethnic background, we need you to come to support the NAACP because you are actually supporting your future. Well, everybody used to tell me I had a really nice long weekend off. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I know. In Stop. the past, when there were three <laughs> events, three days in yes. a row, yes. I'm right. kind of happy for the spacing, to be yeah. honest with yeah. you, that it's the 20th, because 
everybody's competing for the same attention right. on Martin Luther King Day. Correct. Okay. Now, the Cape Verdean Association, I know Moses specifically, yeah. we'll get to that. Right. Um, he wanted an event on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, Moses. Because there haven't been, been. in Brock. And he's right. And one of the things is, is that um, we have, a, it, it's interesting because there are a lot of nonprofits in, in our city. Uh, there are a lot of organizations in our city. It, it's surprising uh, that we really never had an event on January 15th. So the work that, and I'm, I'm biased, I'm on the Cape Verdean Association's board, so the work that Moses Rodriguez has done uh, is essential to making sure that we push this holiday forward in and our city. And that one involves kids. Not it, that the, it does. Not that the other one does. don't. Poems, music, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's yeah. a nice event. It and, is. And we, we happen to be Are you recording a sponsor it? of that. You're, you're sponsoring, sponsoring it. it but, God bless. But, but. We want people to go. Yes. Just because we're recording things, I tell everybody you right. can relive it on cable. Right. Go to. But it's nothing like. I being know there's there. Facebook Live and all of that stuff. Right. Go to it. It's right. not the same thing to be home watching it. it, it there Please are home bound people that can't get out. Right. But get out. So there you go. So let's go back to NAACP and talk about who the speaker is. Who's the keynote so speaker? So we have an extraordinary speaker. It's going to be Attorney Mike, Michael. Cal, um, excuse me, Michael. Curry. Uh, Mike has been, uh, was the past president of the NAACP in Boston for many, many years. He's on the national board of the NAACP. So we are really excited to have him. I, people haven't heard him speak. He is an extraordinary speaker. So uh, we are excited. Okay. Um, no, we won't give away what he's going to speak about. Nope, he can't do that. have given that away. Now, do you have the music that you usually have? We are going to have uh, a very surprise singer. Uh, she is going to do some solos. Uh, she did one for, she did, no, I think she may have done two for um, our State of the City address. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't need to drop the name yet, but uh, she will be there. My point to you is this, come out is gonna be an exciting time. Also, some very good news, I'm gonna let this out publicly, we are going to be recognizing Shana Barnes, the first elected African-American woman to the city council. Uh, so we're really, really excited about that as well. Okay, so we're, we're looking forward to that. And, and Shana does love the spotlight. Yeah. Okay. I don't <laughs> but think Shana, Shana has the image, though. She really she does have the image. Does. I don't yeah. think she ever sought award. She never. But no. No. I think... To thank her for her services is, absolutely, is truly, absolutely. truly a wonderful thing. And so people need to come out and support Shana. Shana, you know, she clearly, I mean, she worked very diligently in her role. So we're asking, you know, when we talk about uh, these sort of events, yes, it is to recognize Dr. King, but it also is to recognize what has happened in terms of the birth of Dr. King's work, whether it's an election of a Shana Barnes, whether it's Jean, people need to come out and support that work. So uh, it starts at 9 o'clock? So start 9 o'clock, try to be on time. Tickets are $40. Uh, students who are 18 and under are 20. And tickets are actually can be purchased online. Um, or you can contact the NAACP branch by calling 508-944-8212. Okay, and I know each member of the board had a certain amount of tickets to sell, but that's, yes. that, 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 that's, <laughs> that's going to be... Cut yeah. off at a certain date so yeah. you get some kind of account. There, there yeah. are tickets at the door. Are they the same price at the door? They are the same okay. price at the door, but we encourage people, if you've been contacted um, or if you know a person, I'm selling tickets, please, please, please try to buy your tickets in advance. It gives us a very, uh, better head count for, for our budget there's, dollar There's amounts. a Facebook for it, isn't there? I, yeah, it is the Facebook. Go to the Facebook page of the NAACP and you should see a link to be able to pay, pay online. Okay, so we got, that, we got that one, which is the actual last event. Correct. In the sequence. Right. We're That's January about, we're 20th. We're talking about it first. Right. Because we're going to play this show up until the 19th. So right. we can get people to go to it. Okay. So the, the next event in reverse chronological order is the Honor the King of Dreamers, Dreamers. Martin Luther King. I love the title. Yes. Especially right now with the, the whole controversy and issue with the Dreamers Act Correct. and everything that's going on. So that is sponsored by the Cape Verdean Association. That's sponsored by the Cape Verdean Association under uh, Moses' uh, Moses Rodriguez's leadership. And that's going to be at St. Edith Stein's Church Hall, 71 East Main Street here in Brockton, uh, January 15th, Monday, the day of the actual holiday between 2 and 6. And Bishop Branch will be a guest speak, uh, will be the guest speaker for that. I'm um, just looking down here, it's poems, music, finger foods, and there will be some raffles. Now, let me tell you something, not taken away from anything else. Uh, so this is the uh, third year in doing the Cape Verdean Association. I can just show you all this. 
This one here um, has a lot of children that are involved, is more activity based. So we encourage parents to come out, it's free. Um, please participate. And again, it's really about honoring the dreamers, it really is. And if you go to St. Edith Stein, it's not upstairs in the sanctuary. No, it's, it's going to be down in the it's basement. Going to be a, it's going to be in the basement. Um, it, handicapped accessible. It is handicapped. I, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, there's food. There's always food. Food is a good thing. Oh, there's going to be food. My favorite part of that event, to be perfectly honest with you, is the young people. I, just, I just said it's that the our, kids. It's, it's the future. It's, it's young kids. It's teenagers. Right. It's all the way up um, because you. the only way you can go forward into the future That's is right. to go back and look at the past, but put a put a new face on it, right. put a new spin on it. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of the same speakers year after year right. after year. I'm more interested in what the young people are saying, right? Because right. they're they're the ones that are going to lead us down. The That's road. right. That's right. You and I going to be? Uh, I don't know when we'll be in a rocking chair, right. but skilled uh, nurse facility. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to go. There. I didn't want to go. I, so, no, I'm sorry. So that one is Monday, January 15th, that is. from two to six at St. Edith Stein. Correct. Right on. East Main Street, which is over near... You um, can't miss the church. It's a beautiful church. JJ's Cafe is that's on right, the other right, side. That's right, right across the street. the back side of it is the Montello right, Street, right. Street End. Okay, so let's go to the temple, Temple Beth Amuna. Right. Okay. Uh, you want to repeat after me? Temple Beth Amuna. Did I say it, it correctly? You got it. Because I don't want Steve it. Weiner to kill me. No. So Steve is my colleague on the executive board of the NAACP. So he's sponsoring, he and Sharon Molden are, are sponsoring this one. And Steve was the president of the men's group, which was the Temple Israel Brother. We love Steve. That was my temple that I went to for quite a few years. It moved. It's out right. of Brockton. It's now a senior health care facility. Yes, Over it is. Over there, all comprehensive. Did a Beautiful job restoring the temple because oh, it did. was a lot of money to upkeep that temple right. and it was becoming unaffordable with less members. The restoration work is exceptional. So yeah. they yeah. they rebranded. They were going to merge with two of the other temples. Didn't happen. Mm -hmm. They're by themselves in Easton in the Easton Industrial Park, which is on Plymouth Street, 15A Plymouth right, Street. Right, that's what I have. You don't know this, but it used to be the Continental Cablevision studio for the town of wow, Easton wow, back in the day. Wow. And the ceiling height, and there was a lighting <laughs> grid hiding under a drop ceiling really, someplace. Really, really, really. So I spent some time there because so I you know the building. The cable. Yeah. Um, it, they're, they're, they took some artifacts from the old temple. They took the ark out of the chapel. They brought over the books. It looks right at the moment like blessing, more of blessing. an office, but they're working on it. Rabbi Gauss, who is the new spiritual leader over there, she's a great lady. Rabbi Werb of many years retired, but he's still Rabbi Emeritus. He still comes back. He's in Florida right, right now. now. So you're not going to see him at this event. Right, right. But this event is featuring the new executive director of Brockton Interfaith Community. Correct. Who's that? So that's uh, uh, William Dickerson the second. Uh, he will be there giving a keynote. It looks like he's a, a Colorado native, uh, had been a pastor, uh, and has been a community organizer for the last five and a half years. Uh, he has expertise in uh, uh, racial uh, equity and leadership development. So we're looking really, really forward. I've met him once. We're looking forward to uh, him delivering a very, very good speech on that day. And the interesting thing about that day is normally they do a luncheon. Yes. It got moved because right. Messiah Baptist Church, who's their partner for years, right. had water damage in, yeah, the basement. in, in the basement. <clears throat> Correct. So they had to move it. And it's been back and forth. It was at the temple for quite a few years. And for right. the last three years, I believe, it was at Messiah Baptist Church under uh, uh, Michael Wayne Walker. Yeah, correct. And um, it, I like that venue because there's a balcony. It's and very nice. And there's a downstairs. So yes. when you do a two camera shoot. <laughs> production. It's, it's, it's good really to go. good. It's yeah, good yeah. to go. Plus they have a place to eat. So because the temple has to be kosher food, it's right. a dessert buffet. It's, so, that's what he explained so you to gotta us. you've got to have a late breakfast and then go straight to dessert. Correct. Okay. And then right. you have the program at 1.30. Right. Okay. And, and that should be a good program as well. Um, usually you have pastors and people from the other churches right. in the community that come. Of the, uh, I know that Phyllis Ellis, the NAACP president for Brockton, will be uh, giving a poem, and I believe that Mayor Carpenter as well will also be at uh, this event. So we're, we're looking um, forward to that. Temple Beth Omuna, did I say it correctly? You got it, you got uh, it. We're expecting people to be there Sunday, January 14th. Uh, the dessert buffet begins 12 to 115. 
right into the sanctuary at 1.30. This is sponsored by Steve Weiner, executive board of the NAACP, and Sharon Molden. And this is, just for everybody to know, their 22nd year is very important. So this is ongoing work, ongoing support. And the reason why I broached that is because, Mark, as you know, recently in the Boston Globe, they, they gave uh, the, the racial status of people of color in the Commonwealth, and they found out $8, $8 is the value of a black family right now in the city of Boston. So it's very important that this sort of uh, work around equity, around civil rights continue on. And again, it is a partnership between churches, between synagogues, it is a partnership of faith. We are looking forward to everybody to come out. Well, if you look at Brockton over the years, going all the way back. All the way back. Different waves of different immigrants yeah, yeah. that all have peacefully coexisted we, we don't have riots in Broadway. No, no. We, 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 we generally all get along. I mean, if you look at the triple-deckers and the, 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 the duplexes and stuff, yes. it's different generations right. of immigrants coming here. But okay? what, yeah, Mark, we, and this is, I love that you're saying this, uh, especially as a white male. I'm going to tell you why. It's because we know, I know from a person that initially lived in Boston, who during high school would get rocks thrown at my bus simply because I was black. You come to Brockton, we have some, some divides and some issues, but we don't have a significant racial divide. And this is what I love about this city. When we have a person such as you, esteemed person such as you, and other people in the community who can have such an open conversation and dialogue about our city and talk about how the fact that we all are together in this. So it's, it's, it's important. It came from my parents. My dad, uh, it all one, starts of at home. one of his first <laughs> uh, assignments, yeah. Dad ta taught as a Jewish man in Southie. See? Right before busing, he became a psychiatric social worker. Yeah. He worked at Walpole State Prison. Day one on the job, someone threw a meat cleaver at his head. Yeah, he stayed in state service and corrections and parole yeah, for 36 yeah, years. Yeah. Dad taught at Stonehill. Dad was a Jewish man who taught at Stonehill. I went to Stonehill. I was probably one of 10 Jewish students that went there. There right. was a class called the Jewish Experience. The rabbi who taught it was oh, out for that's the day. Interesting. And they wanted me to teach it. To teach it. it? Okay. I went down to Miami. My dad was born in Havana, Cuba. Yeah, yeah. My brother has lived in Miami for 40 years. My kids grew up in this city and were raised with all sorts of kids other than seeing the physical color or difference. Right. They, it, it, I mean, I love the names my son brought home. There was a kid named Shibuzo, who was mm -hmm. Haitian. Mm -hmm. I love that name. His brother was Shimri. Mm -hmm. I said, it sounds like a 50s doo-wop. Right, 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 right. But right. that's Bro Brockton High. I think the smartest thing the yeah. city ever did was build one high school. Because I think if we had built two high schools and it was a divided been a city, divide. yeah. we might have had yeah, gang yeah, warfare. Right. You're right. Okay? right. Back in, when I was in school, there was an alleged riot that took out. There were some people that were angry that came down from Boston to make trouble in Brockton. Right. We didn't have that kind of right. stuff. We don't have that kind of stuff. The thing I like about Brockton, if you think about it, Cape Verdean started coming here in 77. Mm. That's when Manny Andrade, mm -hmm. who was one of the I founders know Manny. I know Manny. Yep. of the CV yep. Association, yep. He, came, he came over here in the Sailor Ernestina schooner, mm. which is down in Fall River in New Bedford. I forget mm -hmm. which. And mm -hmm. i got to tell that story at some point because it's a fascinating story. But look at the Cape Verdean Association is already 30, 30 years old. That's 31 right. 31 years old. That's right. Okay. The NAACP, I know oh, well. it's been, I'm trying to think, it's coming up on its 65th yeah, year because yeah. I was at the 60th celebration. We chartered, we, I don't remember exactly year, but we're, we're in our 60s for sure. You're, 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 yeah. you're a couple of years away from the 65th. Yeah, yeah. And I had the honor, Steve Bernard gave me the honor of giving a Lifetime Achievement Award to Judge Bernard Cohen's wife who was a personal friend of my dad, who was one of the founders of the NAACP. Right. I actually sought that out because if, if, if you go back to the history of the founding of this chapter specifically, right, right. and you look at the board and that there's diversity on the board. There's diver I mean, how many, how many I'm glad you I said mean, that. Haitians <laughs> are on the Cape Verdean Association yeah, board. Right, right. You know, African Americans are on the. A lot the, of people don't realize that, or, or most of these, and this is one of the things. Uh, so I'm on all of these boards, yeah. and we are a co quite diverse board across the board. So even though, and I think that's where people get a little disconnect, you will hear Haitian community partners and say, oh, that's a group for the Haitians. That's not true. No, no, uh, we always yeah, talk Yeah, about that's it. not true. We cover the gamut uh, of social service issues across the city. We, you hear 
the Cape Verdeans Association, the great work uh, that Moses' team and the board is doing with respect to uh, DYS, excuse me, DCF, with respect to uh, the Fathers Program. Again, this is across the board. So for us and the NAACP, we, we, you know, uh, we take all comers. So we are pretty diverse in terms of these boards, but more importantly in terms of the work that needs to be done around equity and equality. And I think that, uh, I think that the city of Brockton, in terms of those particular nonprofits, are in very good shape. The real work comes around how do we collaborate in order to make sure that, you know, some three, three tenets of what we need to do, how they're successful. We need. I'm talking every, too much. I'm sorry. Every, everybody, <laughs> I love them all. Everybody does their own thing. Right. And this is, but I just, this, right. this is kind of community-based. That's why right. it's a little different. Right. My dream, I guess. Yes. What unites people? Music. That's true. Food. Food. And culture. That's right. Okay. So back in the day, they used to do Summer Sunday in the Park. Right. Or Summerfest. Summerfest. Still do Summerfest. Summerfest. Yeah. Used to have every ethnic food under the sun in the same place. Right. Right. I want that again. I, you know, it's great for it's great for me being a diabetic, eating all the stuff I'm not supposed to eat. Right. As you know. But where else could you get baklava next to kugel, next to uh, ribs like, and chicken no. and that used to be in the park, and, right. and, and you have a Cape Verdean festival. You have a Haitian Community Partners Gala. Right, um, which is coming up in April. There's now an Angolan right. Association in Brockton that's right. brand new. They're doing something over the French yeah. place. Right. Okay? I want everybody in one place. Right. The, the thing I don't understand about Brockton, and maybe it's coming, is downtown, at some point they were talking about a restaurant incubator and having yeah, all I don't these know. businesses I don't know what happened on to that. Frederick Douglass No, 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 I, you're right. Okay. No, no, you're right. I remember but that. But if you go yeah. to Lynn, if you go to Lynn, yeah. Lynn has that. Lynn has thriving restaurants. Now we, we we have new restaurants. We have Santana. Yeah. We have Luanda. We have we have Gino's. I guess there's another Haitian. There's a Jamaican place open. But we don't have a we don't have a common a common a geographic common thread where people like you're saying in Lynn the same thing in East Boston's uh, Maverick Square. I think that people don't have. We need what you're talking about. I go out of one door and I go into another place. I want an ethnic food yeah. court. Yeah. Okay. I love it. And, and I love the thing I want to do is I want to learn the other languages. Okay. Yeah. I know that That's some the of the challenge. groups yeah. have tried to do that. I don't have time for a 15-week course at Massasoit right. as much as I want to drive students to Massasoit where I teach. Right. I can't do every Tuesday night for 15 weeks or every right. Saturday from 9 to 12. I want to learn snippet. I want to be able to say some of the some common stuff. Common, common, my common. biggest regret in life, my yeah. father was born in Cuba. My mother was born in Boston. We didn't speak Spanish in the home. The only way do I Do you learned, speak Spanish now? I do not. not. My brother, mm. who moved to Florida four Does. years ago, speaks both Spanish and Haitian Creole fluently. Fluently. Okay? Oh, my. I was in Florida. I went yeah. to U of Miami. Yeah. I left Miami to come back here and work in cable because... I couldn't work in Miami. I couldn't be a journalist in Miami. You need to I didn't speak Spanish. Spanish. I needed to talk right. to the people I needed to interview. Right. So I came home, spring break senior year, and Cable was hiring, luckily. So right. I got a job. But I want to, you know, there's nothing better than saying bonsoir at the beginning oh. of, of the <laughs> Haitian Community Partners right. thing or right. obrigado for yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, but, and... You know, you know who's done all of that? Mike Brady goes to all these things. <laughs> yeah, Mike's, Mike's he, like... He sprinkles Mike's, a few words in, <laughs> okay? But I really want to know it. Right, I want right. to know... I First of all, I consider the languages very pretty, the pronunciation and the, and, and well, the, and the it, accents and everything like I that. I think, and I and, and please do not take this wrong with what the bishop's about to say, but it's it's very attractive, it's very sexy sort of the way it's the dialect, and so I think that it's important uh, for us to learn a second language, but let me tell you a second and third language. But they're saying that uh, at our age, we need to do that for the growth of our brain. Have you heard that? It's like yeah. scares the well, heck out what of they, me. What we need to do with <laughs> languages in this country is we need to start teaching them in third grade. Yeah, we, they do yeah. reverse English immersion to get people that don't speak the language. Right. They need to. My dad led a two-year campaign in middle school to get Spanish in the middle schools. It right. wasn't there. I took three years of French. Really? And I didn't learn Spanish. Okay. I didn't learn Spanish. And you Spanish. know who else, and Moses Rodriguez speaks about this a lot, how when he came here, it's like in other countries, English is like oh. down at the bottom of languages. Most people speak multiple languages. Right. So it's and a, a lot of people in other countries speak English. They don't, right. and they, they learn English. Now, people are yeah. saying yeah. Uh, a global economy of the future, you've got to know Russian and Chinese. Oh. I'll leave that to the president. Yeah. We'll yeah. leave that alone. <laughs> okay. Um, but... Um, you know, I, I, I really want, oh, yeah. I want to be, I have students that take my speech class. Really? I, yeah, yeah, some yeah, of yeah. them struggle with language. 
I want to be able to better communicate Can, with them. With them. That's right. The, that's, that's and the way so you'd be able to bridge the gap by doing that clearly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the last hat, we're gonna just, I'm going to run down the events. You got quick. it, my friend. Did you? I'm going I'm to I'm take them uh, from you. You okay. are. You are in charge. So, so we have three events. We're doing them in reverse chronological order. On uh, Saturday, January 20th, from 9 to 12 There you go. Over at Lombardo's in Randolph. You got it. Is the NAACP breakfast featuring Michael Curry as the keynote speaker. Tony's the MC. Yes, I'm okay. going to say, yes. On Monday the 15th, Martin Luther King Day proper, 2 to 6, St. Edith Stein Church Hall, honoring the King of Dreamers, Martin Luther King, the Cape Verdean Association of yes, Rockton sir. is doing that one. And the third event, the first one in reverse chronological order, is Temple Beth Amuna and uh, Messiah Baptist Church are doing the 22nd annual dessert luncheon yes, at, yes. At, at the temple, which is now in Easton, 15A Plymouth Drive in the Easton Industrial Park. That starts the buffet at 1215, the program's at 130, and uh, two events on one weekend and one event on there the you following go. weekend. There you go. But to tie it all together, Tony, I got the five-minute queue, so we probably got about yep. three, and I'll give you two. You're also chairman of the Diversity Commission. Yes, yes. The Diversity Commission is comprised of uh, is what is it nine? It's not. It's not. We have one member that had resigned. It's nine okay, members. So yeah. nine member diverse panel. It is. And you meet on a monthly basis. We meet the first Thursday of each month. Right now, because the elevator is down at City Hall, we'll be meeting in the basement. Okay. And it's open to the public. It's a public it, meeting. Oh, it's you absolutely. Post the agenda. I you spread it on do. social media. Right. Anything coming up? Well, we, well most, we, unfortunately, because of the handicap issue, we're not having an elevator. We did have the city attorney available to us, the city solicitor available to us to discuss the uh, parts of the investigation results from the, the Lopes, um, uh, not hiring the Lopes, the Lopes investigation, excuse me. Yeah. So we're excited about that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get them in February, but that is one of, going to be one of our topics uh, that one of the commissioners has put forward. So we're, you know, we're an active commission, but we, yes, we, we need public support. We all are in this together here in the city of Brockton. We want to avoid lawsuits. We want to avoid them. Yeah, that would be absolutely <laughs> a, a good thing to do since the city is self-insured. Exactly. Not, not exactly. a good idea. So look, at, I'm looking forward to all of this. It's all going to be, we're all going to record all of it. Oh, but thank there's you. nothing thank you. like being there. That's right. So we want people to come out. They're going to get a good show. They're going to yes. be educated. They're yes. going to be informed, That's entertained. Right. And people can participate. Looking Absolutely. for membership for the NAACP. Correct. And the other organizations as well. All of the organizations are looking not only for membership, but also volunteers. So when we say membership, membership not in terms of just dollars, but volunteers are people that have vocations that we can utilize. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Perfect. Especially around mental health. Especially around mental health. Perfect. Thank you. Mark, thank Always you. A pleasure. And, and Happy and New Year to you, my friend. You too. Uh, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.